Let's take a look at importing records into RedCap in a group. To do this, you'll want to start by going to the Data Import tool. Here, you can download the Data Import template, either set up so that the records are in rows or in columns. When you download the template, you'll get a CSV file that lists all of your variable names across the top. If you use the repeating instruments in the project, you'll also have spaces to denote which instruments are repeating in what instance the data is supposed to go in. If you're using this for data entry, you can simply type the information you need in. You don't have to put information in every field, only the ones where you want to import new information. You'll notice that I'm putting information in coded. For example, genre is a multiple choice question, so I put a 3 in to indicate the answer is what is paired with the option 3 in the question itself. Similarly, the field how much is a slider field. On the back end, slider fields are on a scale of 0 to 100, so I put the number from 0 to 100 to indicate where the slider would have landed. The series of other genre come from the fact that that field is a checkbox question. Checkbox questions work a little bit differently than regular multiple choice questions. Each option in the checkbox question is a yes-no question. So here I'm seeing option 1 for other genre, yes or no, which I answer with a 0 for no or 1 for yes. Then option 2 in other genre, yes or no. Option 8, option 3, option 4, 5, 6, 7, 88, and 89. For every form in the project, you'll see a field that says that form name and then complete. This is asking for the completion status of that form, how RedCap should mark it. If you want it to be marked as incomplete, put in a 0. If you want it to be marked as unverified, put in a 1. And if you want it to be marked as complete, put in a 2. Another way to enter data into your data import template is to copy and paste it from another data source. So here I can just copy and paste over the information that I have. And this is what you'll use if you're pasting in data from another source. A couple of key items to be aware of here though. First, you want to be sure that all the variables are lined up in the same way. If the variables are misaligned, you'll have errors in your data. You also need to make sure that the data is formatted the way REDCap expects it to be formatted. If you need to see how REDCap expects your data to be formatted, an invaluable resource is the codebook. You can find the codebook in your REDCap project by going to the project homepage. It's the very top button. The codebook contains all of your variables by their variable name and their field label. It will tell you what type the field is, how it's been validated, and for multiple choice questions, it will tell you what the coding options are. This is a quick place where you can come and look up how you're supposed to have the data formatted before you move it into REDCap. If you're adding data that has repeating instruments, the import will look a little bit different. The first row of information will be exactly the same. However, for the repeating instances, you'll repeat the record ID, indicate what instrument is to be repeated, and which instance each piece of data is supposed to go in. So here I have three instances of the form, favorite movie, that I want to add data into. First, I'm going to scroll all the way over to the right so that I can find the fields that go with that form. Then I simply enter in the information, making sure that I line up the rows properly. Now I'm going to save my data 
I have to save the data as a CSV file in order to import into REDCap. Going back to the file import page, I check that I have all the information correct. The record format is in rows. Here it will let you choose what format the date and time is supposed to be in. Finally, you choose whether you want blank values to override existing data. By default, the answer here is no. This means that any blanks I have in my import file will just be ignored. If I change it to yes, any blanks I have will overwrite any data that I already have in my project in those fields. This is occasionally useful if you need to clear out a large section of information, but it is a double-edged sword because it does allow you to overwrite large sections of data. The vast majority of the time, you'll want to keep it set to no. Then I just choose my CSV file and click Upload File. Here, REDCap is letting me know that I have a few errors in my data file. In record 87, date of birth is in an invalid date format and age is improperly validated. It should be a number, not text. I can go back and easily fix those. Then it's telling me in record 88, I've entered a value for genre that doesn't exist. I'll need to change that as well before I can import the file. I resave my file. and try again. This time there were no major errors in the file that I tried to upload. If you ever run into the problem where REDCap runs out of memory when you're trying to upload because of the number of errors, the first thing to do is to backtrack and try uploading only one or two rows of your data. What probably happens in this situation is that an entire column or several entire columns are formatted incorrectly. This can cause hundreds or thousands of errors in your project that can be easily fixed just by changing what the field type is in your import file. Backtracking and only uploading one or two records will allow REDCap to tell you what the error is. With my successful file, I can now review the changes I've put in. All of the fields are a unique one, so I just see the black text and indicating new data. Gray text indicates existing data. Since these are new records, we're only seeing it in the checkbox fields, where it's assuming any place I didn't tell it one, it must be a zero because I'm importing data into that field. If I was overwriting existing data, that would appear in red, so I'd be able to review quickly what data I was overwriting and if I actually wanted to overwrite it with the data in my import file. Once you're done, you just click Import Data. And now if I go to my record status dashboard, I can see that the data has been added in for those five records.